everyone. Today I'm going to give you two videos in one. So those of you that like get ready with me and seeing new makeup, as I talk, I'm going to be trying out this new PR package from Physicians Formula, all about The Breakfast Club, the iconic 80s movie that I have a personal connection to. But at the same time, for those of you who are here because of the title above my head, this is also gonna be story time and I'm gonna be sharing how we travel with a large dog. So for those of you who are new and don't know who I am, hi, my name is Marnie. And normally my videos focus primarily on beauty and clothing for the over 40, maybe over 45, maybe even closer to 50, or I don't care what age you are, but that's generally where the people land who watch my videos, beauty, fashion, all that good stuff. I also happen to be a mom to two 20 something boys and most importantly for this video, three dogs. Two Westies that are 13 and 10 and a very big, very sweet, very neurotic, five, almost six year old Weimaraner. So the point of this story is to share with you a recent road trip that we went on with the big guy and why. Even those who follow me were asking me on Instagram this weekend, what are you doing? So we have two boys. One is 21 and lives most of the year now in Oxford, Mississippi where he is a student and the older one lives in Houston and he just turned 24. I live in San Antonio with my husband and the dogs. So while I'm sure that my sons desperately missed their parents and could not wait to see them, I say that facetiously, they really, really missed the big dog, Rowdy. I did just grab my new travel makeup bag didn't even unpack it from the trip, so most of the makeup I'm using will come out of here if I don't have something from the PR package to use, and I also just have the brushes that I packed in my travel brush holder here as well. I've unpacked none of this so that I could just have it for the video. The boys love the Westies, but their dog is, is rowdy. Like He is their boy, he loves them, he adores them, and to be fair, the Westies, Mimi's 13 and Wrigley the male is 10 and he has a lot of health issues They're just not as travel ready as Rowdy is and I should also add that We drove this was a road trip So we always rent a car for a couple of reasons when we go on a road trip one We don't want to put those kind of miles on our actual personal vehicles Two, when we take Rowdy, we need a bigger vehicle because we bring a crate. I'm sure everyone's dogs are lovely and well-behaved in the car. Um, ours is not. Rowdy is a very anxious dog. He has separation anxiety and he is 80 pounds. And when he is in a car with us, if he is not restrained, he wants to sit in the driver's lap, which is dangerous for everybody involved. Also, dogs have a natural denning instinct. They feel more secure and comfortable for the most part in some sort of crate-like situation. So I will link the travel crate that we use. It is soft-sided, so I don't recommend this for leaving your dog unattended if they do have separation anxiety, which is rowdy. It's a very big crate. Um, he can stand up and walk around and turn around and get some steps in, so to speak. We got a, what did we rent? A VW Atlas was plenty big for him and all of our stuff. So that's my first tip. Even if you think that your dog does well, not crated or restrained, I think it is great to put them in a crate for any kind of longer road trip type travel. As far as other gear that I recommend that you have in the car with you, we picked up a new travel water bowl. It helps with slurps and spills. Now we didn't keep the water in the crate at all times. We made strategic pit stops so that he could stop, have a little pee break and get some water. We noticed with our dogs that they tend to not like to eat or drink when they're on the road. We also bought him a new travel slow feed bowl. And when we did get to our destination, it was really helpful to get him a little distracted and more engaged in the eating because like I said, he in particular is a nervous dog, doesn't like a lot of change, as long as we're around, he seems to do okay. And he was really into 
the puzzle, so to speak, of trying to get that food in his mouth. So that kept him busy for a little bit. Other items I recommend specifically for the car trip, a toy that will keep them busy. So we found these pickle toys that have little ridges in them and you can stuff them with treats. We tend to, especially when we travel, we don't really give him treats. We take extra of his kibble and use that as treats because we don't want his stomach to get upset and dogs when they travel, that could just be a thing. So keeping changes to a minimum. I should point out, he really does enjoy going with us and seeing the kids. It makes it sound like we're torturing our dog. Anyway, so we just stuff his pickle with actual kibble that he's used to eating. And that seems to work really well, keeps him pretty busy. But I will say Rowdy's the kind of dog that when you get him in the car, he just chills. He just completely just sits in his crate, takes a little nap. Occasionally we hear him get up and kind of move around and like reposition himself, but he's very chill. He really likes it. Occasionally, we always bring them with just in case. We will give him some CBD treats to make sure he's really calm. We always take them with us. I've tried a bunch of different options. I will say I am a trusted lab ambassador, full disclosure, and I do have a discount code, but I do find those treats to be the most effective. And that's what I give to my dogs. They both, two out of my three dogs don't care for loud noises, thunderstorms, fireworks, that sort of thing. So we use them for 4th of July. We use them when we know of a thunderstorm that is coming. Also kind of key is poop bags. Take plenty. Don't assume that wherever you're stopping is going to have them. We like to sort of go onto Google Maps. My husband loves this. This is an extra tip. He loves to go to Google Maps, look at our route, see where gas stations are every so often. Maybe every it's three hours, we'll take a stop, let him walk around for a few minutes. Everybody takes a potty break. But he likes to look at the Google Earth images to see if there's actual greenery around. All right, I'm breaking into the first of the Breakfast Club palettes. This is called the Saturday Detention Face Palette. Love this. This was filmed where I grew up. The exterior shots were actually filmed at my husband's high school. The interior shots were filmed at a high school that was then closed down. It later became a community college. The concept of the breakfast club, I've been told, is based on my actual high school. So anyway, in the palette, there are apparently two highlighters, two blushes, and two bronzers. So let's start with the bronzer, and I'm gonna start with the lightest one called the athlete. Now let's get back to the dog discussion. So you do have to do some planning. I don't recommend just hopping in the car. I would also highly recommend taking copies of your dog's shot records, immunization, vaccination, whatever you want to call them, records. You never know. It's always good to have on hand. Ooh, I like this. It's very smooth. Doesn't really smell like the typical physician's formula bronzer. It doesn't have that sunscreen scent to it. Which I really like. I like the sunscreen scent, I should say. So for this particular trip, we went to visit the kid in Mississippi first. So that means uh, the route we took was San Antonio to Jackson, Mississippi, which is about nine, nine and a half hours. It's icy, but it's wow, it's super pretty, but definitely icy. I'm using the darker of the two highlighters. So about nine, nine and a half hours is about as long as both we can handle in a car and about as long as I think is reasonable to have a dog in a car and we do take two, three stops along the way to give him time to get out. I'm gonna go with the Rebel for my, it's the pinkier of the two blushes. It's not particularly pigmented. I mean, I'm pretty pale. Shows up on my finger. It swatches nicely. I'm just not seeing it really too much. It is buildable below. Okay, this is nice. One thing I forgot to tell you to have in your car, I mean, this is not rocket science. I'm sure you all know this already. They need water, like I said, and you don't wanna to have to run in and get it. So we picked up two pretty good sized jugs of water from the grocery store. I ordered a cooler backpack from Amazon, which I love, I'll link it below. Um, it kept everything cold. Even we left the backpack out overnight with the ice packs inside it and the next morning everything was still cold. It was amazing. Now I'm reaching for the eye palette. It's called Being Bad Feels Pretty Good. And it's 12, pretty neutral, a little bit warmer shades. There's some beautiful plums. 
a bright orangey bronze, and then the rest are pretty typical bronzy neutrals. So as far as food goes, like I said earlier, on a road trip is not the time to start messing around with new food. So definitely bring their own food with, but to make your life easier, definitely pack their food. Like we feed Rowdy twice a day. So pack their food pre-portioned out in baggies. We just used like quart size of black baggies, put his, he has a cup and a half of food in the morning, cup and a half of food at night. So we just parceled out how many days we'd be on the road, added a few extras just in case. Okay, this one doesn't seem to be all that pigmented. And then we went from there. I'm looking for a mid-tone brown to use in the crease and everything is shimmery. That's in the mid-tone section except for this bronze, so let's let's go for it. And that way, every time we checked into a hotel, we only brought up the food we were using for that stay, just kept things kind of easy to keep track of. Because just to make this more complicated, not only are we bringing along an 80 pound neurotic dog who needs his own emotional support animal, we stay, went from San Antonio to Jackson, Mississippi, stayed, got there at basically dinner time, checked in, got up the next morning, drove another two and a half hours to Oxford, Mississippi, stayed in Oxford, Mississippi, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning got up, drove all the way to Houston, that was about a nine hour drive, and checked in a hotel there, and then Monday morning got up and left. So multiple stays in a short amount of time is a lot. So let's talk hotels. Obviously you need to stay in a dog friendly hotel, we have had great luck with Bonvoy hotels in general, where Bonvoy members were just like 12 nights away from platinum level. So we're just trying to game up. I love it. Like it's like a video game. We're just trying to get to the next level. Not every location takes dogs. So you definitely need to check either on their website. I think their app now has a way to filter it out so you can see if pets are allowed. Some require a security deposit that's non-refundable. Some don't. I will say in general, we have had great luck with Aloft and Town Suites. So definitely check, that's key, to make sure that your hotel not only takes dogs, takes dogs of a certain weight when you're dealing with a large breed and whether or not you they require a security deposit. Every location is gonna be a little bit differently. Now, as far as booking your room goes, this is kind of important. There are some strategically easier places to stay on a hotel property than others, for instance, uh, you're gonna have to be going out to take the dog out. You don't have a yard, obviously you can't just open the door and your dog's in a new location. They may not sleep through the night. They may wanna go outside, say three o'clock in the morning, which happens. So easy access is key. We always try to stay on the first or second floor, if possible, near the stairs, not the elevator. It's far easier just run down the stairs than have to wait for an elevator, especially because a lot of hotel guests may not like dogs and may completely freak out if they try to get on an elevator and there's a giant dog sitting there. Just a note, I'm not loving this palette. I'm swatching all the shades if you're wondering what I was doing and I'm not getting a lot of payoff here. So we're just gonna keep at it. And another reason why you want your room near the stairs is generally speaking, they're at the end of the hallways, there's less foot traffic, there's less people walking by. I don't know how your dogs are, but my dogs think once you put them somewhere, even if it's not their house, it is now their house and they're gonna guard it and they're gonna bark at anyone who walks by. Have an outfit ready to throw on by the door or sleep in something that you don't mind people seeing you in. Uh, you know, you have your shoes, all that, the leash, the collar, and the doggy bags sitting right by the door so when they do wake up in the middle of the night, you are prepared. So it makes, I make it sound like my dog is just completely crazy and can't be taken anywhere. But he honestly is a lot of fun on road trips. He's very chill in the car. He loves hotel rooms. He loves chilling on the bed. He loves looking up the bigger windows. He likes looking at things. He really enjoys it. So that's a lot of fun. But then there's the question of eating out. If you have a dog that you cannot leave alone in the hotel room, which is us. So it's really important to find restaurants that let you bring, let have an outdoor patio basically. So in our case, we did obviously a lot of drive-throughs on the road and ate in the car, but once we got to our destinations, we were either picking up food and bringing it back to our kids' homes to eat there, 
or we found places that had very dog friendly patios. The problem this time is it was basically 100 degrees wherever we were, so nobody wanted to sit outside. So while there's some really, I would say that Oxford, Mississippi is incredibly dog friendly, so many outdoor patio spots to eat at so many amazing restaurants, like high end restaurants to mid price to, you know, just easy walk in for burgers kind of place. So lots of options there, but it was just too hot. So we got really good at ordering on apps and just picking it up and taking it back to their places. It's also nice when you are traveling with your dog to a location to think about things to do with them while you are there. It's their vacation too. So unfortunately the weather didn't really work for us this time, but we have some great spots that we like to take him to walk in Oxford and Houston. We just didn't really do it this time because it was so hot. Okay, now let's try the mascara from his collection. It's called the Breakfast Club Detention Mascara. Very narrow, little skinny brush, which will be great for getting on the bottom lashes. Nothing's coming off. Okay, oh, here we go. I am underwhelmed. Oops, got it all over my eye. I am underwhelmed by this collection. I'm usually not a fan of limited edition anything, especially drugstore. It just seems to be rushed and not the same quality as the rest of their line. We shall see. So far, I would say just stick with the standalone permanent collection Physicians Formula Face products, which I love. For those of you watching who know me and know my channel, you know that my youngest son Shane has a cat that has never met Rowdy before. So we thought this visit we would attempt that and I will insert some footage here. I think you really need to be watching your dog. So, that didn't go well. I mean, I kind of knew it wouldn't go well. I have a Weimaraner with a high prey drive it's fine, and a little black cat that darts around. Of course she's pucked up. I will say his cat, whose name is Nix, held her own, took a swat at him, but uh, we never, it didn't work. We tried twice and just, so when Shane comes home next with the cat, we're gonna do what we did when he visited in May and leave the cat upstairs in his bedroom. While we were out of town, I picked up the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wax and I meant to do this before I put on my eye makeup. I think I salvaged the eye look, but I do not recommend this. I don't recommend the face palette, the mascara, super dry and doesn't really do much. I did smudge some here, we'll work on that later. Um, I haven't done the lipsticks yet. I'm hopeful on the lipsticks, those are exciting. Okay, so I did pick up the brow wax. You need the teeniest, teeniest amount. I'm using a spoolie I already had, but I did order the Anastasia one because why not? And you smush it up, smush. You bra brush your brows up. Generally, I go through once and brush everything straight up. And then the second pass, I kind of shape it like so. I know the trend is to get really exaggerated with it. I'm not interested in doing that. I think this is enough. So what I like to do in the less than a week since I've had this is do this first, then go back in with the brow pen from Anastasia Beverly Hills and fill in any bald spots or thinning spots. And then when I'm all done with my makeup, I like to rinse off the brow spoolie. So normally this is where I would do my setting spray. But that part I did unpack. Let's play with some lipstick. So there's three in the collection, at least that I have. And I will say, I think the packaging looks pretty cheap, kind of junky. This isn't a slam against drugstore. I love drugstore and there are some drugstore that does incredibly well on packaging and pigmentation and competes, gives the high-end stuff a run for its money. This is not it. Um, so there is the shade, the world is an imperfect place, get real, and I don't like Mondays. Well, who does? So here we have on my hand, the world is an imperfect place is on the bottom. The middle shade is get real, and the top shade is I don't like Mondays. Let's go with the middle shade which is Get Real. These feel 
Not so creamy on the back of my hand. Let's just see how it goes on. I think these are, I need to read the little card that came with this. These feel like semi-matte, which I will admit I don't love. I don't know if this goes with my look. Hang on. Okay, I wiped that one off. Let's try I Don't Like Mondays. It's the Breakfast Club, the Princess Lipstick is what it says on the packaging. I like this. I don't love brown tone lipstick. I like this one. It's definitely more wearable. I think from my skin tone and some other browns, it's not screaming the 90s, which is good because this movie is based in the 80s. But you know what? I don't hate this. I don't hate this. I wouldn't recommend any of this, but I don't hate it. That sounds pretty harsh. I was right, found the info card. It is a semi-matte finish. And now that I have it on, I, I actually am liking at least how it looks in the monitor. I am the kind of person that loves gloss, so I would layer on some gloss. And I like these other colors too. So I'm going to stick with not recommending everything else, but I really think these lipsticks are fun. So thank you to Physicians Formula for sending me this PR package. While I might not love everything in this box, um, I love the concept, I love the 80s, and I absolutely love The Breakfast Club. So whether you're a makeup lover and you're curious about this new collection from Physicians Formula, or you're a dog lover and you're curious about some tips for traveling with your dog on a road trip, I hope this was helpful, informative, entertaining. Please do not hesitate to ask me any questions on either topic or anyone that I haven't mentioned, hit those comments down below. I read everything and I'll answer all the questions that I can. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.